Yes, good afternoon. This is another day. I want to start from where I left yesterday. Yesterday, my last lesson was about discount. And I said today I will complete that subtopic of discount. So today we are going to start with percentage discount. So it's still on the same topic concerning money. We are still on money. We are still on money. So today I'm going to start with percentage discount. Percentage discount. A very common question again in exams, both external and internal exams. How do you get a percentage discount? We have only one formula that you use to get percentage discount. That the formula is now this. You just say now that it should be just discount itself. Divide by the marked price multiplied by 100%. I want you to differentiate this. Because all over yesterday we are talking about percentage profit was over the buying price. Percentage loss was also over the buying price. But now percent discount is different. Is discount itself divided by the marked price, then you multiply it by 100%. Which is the same as now discount over the marked price multiplied by 100%. I want to give very good examples for you to, to understand. Or now you calculate percentage discount. The marked price of a radio was 2,400. Let us assume that the marked price of a radio, we have a radio now, we have a radio. Let the marked price of the radio be 2,400. That is now the marked price of the radio. Hamid bought the radio for 2,100. He went further and he bought the radio now for 2,100. Then now, what was, the ma what was the percentage discount? First, you get the discount. And I said, as I said yesterday, discount is just the market price minus the selling price. In our case here now, the market price is 2,400. The selling price is 2,100. So in our case now, our discount is only 300 shillings. So to get percent discount now, you just say 300 divided by the marked price, not over the selling price. Over the marked price is 2,400, then you multiply by 100%. Two zeros will cancel the two zeros. Then class by three one, by three you get six. Now, by two, uh, by, by three year, by three year, sorry, you don't get six, you get eight. So now, we have by two again, you get four. By two again is 50. By two again is two. By two again is 25. So our answer now is 25 over two. 25 over two is equivalent to 12.5% or 12 and a half percent. So whichever case, all of them are answers, 12.5 percent or 12 and a half percent. All these are answers. Another example on how to get percentage discount. The marked price of a book is 400. The marked price of a book is 400. Now we have a, a textbook, for example, now. The marked price of that book in the bookshop is only 400 shillings. Now, the selling price of the same book is 380 shillings. So now, how much was the discount? If the market price is 400, the selling price is 380, that means the discount is only 20 shillings. Where is 20 shillings coming from? The market price subtract the selling price. 400, take away 380, you get 20 shillings. So now, for you to get a percentage discount, you say the discount itself divided by the marked price, then you multiply by 100%. In our case here now, we have 20 divided by the marked price, which is 400, then you multiply by 100%. I'm warning you, if you use the selling price, your answer will also be in the choice. So you must be very careful. 
Yes, an uh, another example on the percentage discount is now at the marked price of a textbook in the bookshop is 400 shillings. The selling price of the same book in the bookshop is 380 shillings. How much was the percentage discount? Now, you get the discount divided by the marked price, then you multiply it by 100%. In our case here now, the discount is marked price minus the selling price. That's what I taught yesterday. So in our case here, we have only 20 shillings as a discount, then divided by the marked price, then you multiply by 100%. Once you simplify, you, this zero will cancel the other zero, zero, the other zero, then by two, one, four into two goes two times, then by two, one, 10 divided by two is five. So our, in our case now here, the percentage discount is one moderated by five, which is only 5% which is only 5%. Let me give you a scenario of two similar questions on the same topic, which have been tested in the year 2019 and the year 2011, so that you relate what you are learning to what is also coming in the exam. Uh, 2019, that only last year, question number uh, 37, Kazungu paid 3,200 for an item after being, a disc, being given a discount of 20%. Kazungu paid 3,200 for an item after being given a discount of 20%. This is, this is an item which Kazungu paid 3,200 after he was given a discount of 20%. This is the selling price in the shop. Kazungu paid this after he was given a discount of 20%. Then, how much was the marked price? The examiner is not always dealing, asking about the percent discount or the discount. He can ask you the selling price, the marked price, whichever. So you must be very keen on this. Last year, they gave you 3,200 after being given a discount of 20. Discount of 20 means 100 take away 20 because it's the meaning of the word after. Always when you are working this problem, make sure you underline the keyword. The keyword. He, will, he paid this one after being given a discount of 20. That means now 3,200 was equivalent to 80%. 80% means so because you paid after being given a 20% discount, that means before it was 100%, now after 20%, you remain with 80%. So what was the market price? Again, what about 100%, you get the market price. Very fast, you cross multiply, you say 3,200, multiply it by 100, then you divide by 80. In our case here, we have zero, zero, by 81, by 80 goes 40 times, 40 times 100, so that means it's 4,000. In our case now here, the marked price was 4,000 shillings. That was a question which was test tested last year. Question number 37. I want to give still another example. The last one, which was also tested in the year 2011. A winja bought a pair of shoes for 810 after being given a discount of 10. The same scenario now, they ask also in the year 2011. He bought a pair of shoes for 810 shillings. 810 shillings is the selling price. For 810 shillings, after being given a discount of 10%. Class, if you are given a discount of 10%, that means you only pay 90%. So 810 is equivalent to 90%. Then what was the market price? Again, what was about, what is about, 100%. Then now you cross mine. The same scenario we have done in the year 2019, the same scenario was also tested in the year 2011. So you could remember you said 810 multiplied by 100 divided by 90. In our case here now, zero will cancel zero. Then by 9, 1 by 9 is 9. 9 multiplied by 100, you get 900 shillings. So 900 shillings was the marked price. Before I wind, I wind up uh, that subtopic of percent discount, go and solve all the problems pertaining percentage discount, which have been tested all the way from 1985 
to last year, which was 2019. That's your assignment during this time of Corona era. And time I'm doing the subtopic, go back and revise all the past questions concerning that topic. So very fast, still on money. Let us let me go to another subtopic, still on money, which is about commission, an area which is very common in the exams again, and which is highly messed up by majority of our students countrywide. Commission is one of the topics where some of the majority of the students don't understand. So I want today to rest the case of, of commission. Commission. Very common uh, question. What is commission? Uh, some companies employ salespeople to sell their goods. These salespeople are just paid some part of the money. That money paid to the salespeople is called commission. This is very different from the salary. Companies employ very many people. That's why you, when you, you are walking around uh, your home area, you meet these people called alkas. They carry so many things. You wonder whether this item belongs to them. They don't belong to them. They belong to a certain company. They are only paid a commission. A commission means they are only paid part of the money of their sales. That is what we call commission. However, some salespeople are paid monthly salary together with commission. So it will depend on one company to another. That's what we call commission. Some companies, they will give salespeople salary. On top, they will also give commission. A very uh, good example so that you understand what's commission on a day-to-day basis you see the matatus, the conductors, every time say, beba, 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 beba. You wonder how much this person is being paid. Maybe, for example, now, on a, a very good example is the matatu case. Maybe for every passenger, the conductor is given around 10 shillings. Now, that 10 shillings is just part of the commission. So, commission is, is, is diverse. So even Matatu, in Matatu, that's also commission. They have no salary. They only get commission. A very good example is this. A company offers a commission of 20%. I, I'm saying it will depend on one company to another. In this case now, this company is only giving a commission 20% for every good you sell. This company is only gives 20% for the value of goods you sell. So the, if the more you sell the goods, the more commission you earn. That means now the spirit of hard work. I like commission because this is, it encourages the spirit of hard work. Assume now this salesperson, uh, he sold goods worth 20,000. So each commission is only 20% of the total sales. In our case here now, the commission will be only 20% multiplied by 20,000 which is equivalent to only 4,000 Kenya money. That's very clean money per day. The more you work, the more the commission. A very, another example uh, is this. A trader gets a commission of 15% for each article that he sells. I'm saying uh, commission depends from one company to another. This is another company which only gives 15% 15% of the value of items uh, which are sold in the shop. Uh, so how much commission did he get after selling items worth 6,000? If the company is all, only gives 15% and you sell goods only worth 6,000, that means now your commission will be 15% of 6,000. 15% of 6,000, which is equivalent to 15 over 100 multiplied by 6,000, which is equivalent now 15 multiplied by 60, which is 15, 150 times 6, 0, 0, 9. The commission there now is 900 shillings. The one better thing about commission, once you are paid, you are gone. You don't have another, uh, another uh, agreement with the owner of the carbon. The more you sell, the more you get the money. Very fast, I want now to go to two uh, past KCP questions. 
so, so, so that you also relate to what we are learning and the what is tested in the exam. Now, in the year 2017 now, uh, the basic salary of the salesman was 12,000. This now is a different case. The salary already is given. It's called the basic salary. Basic salary is always there because it's basic. This one, the salary was only 12,000. This money is not enough. So the spirit of hard work must be there if you have to make ends meet. Then the owner of the company, the owner of the company is also adding 5% commission on goods sold above 20,000. Apart of, from this, you are also given 5% of any money above 12,000. In that one month, he sold goods worthy 120,000. He sold goods worthy 120,000. And remember the commission is only given on 5% for any money above 20,000. That means if you sell a goods worth 120,000, how much money is above 20,000? That's only, you know, you minus 20,000. The only money which is above one to, uh, 20,000 is only 100,000. So the commission would be 5% of the money which is above. And the please underline above. Once you see this question in the exam, underline this word. This is the key word in the exam. This, that's the key word in the exam. Any money above 20,000 of the total sales. So I repeat again, if the total sales were 120,000, the money which is above 20,000 is only 100,000. So 5% of the money which is, was above 20,000, which is only 100,000. Then two zeros, they come to the two zeros. So 1,000 times 5, now the commission will be 5,000. Now the question is, what was the total earning that month? Now, the salary was 12,000 and uh, the commission was 5,000. How do you get total earning? Total earning is your basic salary added to your commission. In our case here now, our basic salary was 12,000. Add 12,000 to 5,000. So the total salary was now 17,000. The total salary was 17,000. I repeat again, total earning is salary plus commission. What you have, have, you have agreed with the company plus the commission that will be added on top. In our case here now, the total earning there was 17,000. Another example on the same, another example on the same, a firm charges customers only 200% commission on, of, on cashing a check. If you cash a check, you are only given 200%. 200%. When you cast a check of another company, your money is only 200%. That is only your money. So assume if you cash a check worth 1,000, your commission is only 200%. Because the managers, the directors, they have no time to keep on going to the bank. They have to employ people on commission terms. So you cast a check worth 1,000 shillings then the company will only give you 200% of that commission. In our case, Yana, 200% to improve a fraction is 5 over 200, then you multiply by 100, 1,000. That is it. The two zeros, we can both cancel the two zeros. So by 2, 1, by 2 is 5. 5 times 5 is only 25 shillings. So for every 1,000, you get 25 shillings. That is now another company, which is very much important. Still on the same, same topic, go back again, you solve all the problems regarding commission, all the way from 1985 up to, up to KCP last year. Then in case of any problem, then let me know. This time, please, uh, this, this is a very big occasion, and I'm urging all our candidates countrywide uh, to do thorough revision. Uh, uh, I'm through now with commission. I want to go straight again uh, to higher purchase. Another very key area still on money. I started by saying uh, money is one of the topics that I'm very happy when I'm teaching because I know somewhere I'm, I'm 
making somebody earn a living. Because money uh, is scarce, you must work hard to get that money. That's what, that's what I said yesterday when I, when I was beginning the topic on the money. Higher purchase. Higher purchase. This, this now is also an, a method of buying goods. This is a method of buying goods by paying for them over a period of time. This is different from cash price. Higher purchase is a method of buying goods for, uh, by paying for them over a period of time. The higher purchase is always higher than the cash price. The higher purchase, again, is always higher than the monthly price. That's why I normally say now, higher purchase is one of the worst methods of buying goods. Because the prices are always higher than the normal prices. I don't recommend uh, uh, during this era of economic times, you buy things at a higher price. It's, to me, it's one of the worst methods of buying goods. Because you pay for them over a long period of time, and again, the prices are higher than the normal time. Now, the amount paid first, listen carefully, the amount of money that you pay first is called deposit. The money that you pay first is called deposit. This is the money that you pay first. The money that you pay after that is called monthly installments. It's called monthly installment. I repeat again. The money that you pay first is called deposit. And the money that you pay thereafter is called monthly installments. Monthly installments. So it, in, our, in, our, in my case here now, I have purchased now, it shows now deposit added to total monthly installments. It's a very bad method of buy goods, but uh, uh, you have to know how to work out problems on higher purchase. The money you pay for the deposit, followed by monthly installments. A very good example, assume that uh, I want to buy this building which is holding our studio. The building, it has 15 floors, 15 floors. For assume that uh, the higher purchase price of this building is 100 million. A very good example. Let the higher purchase price of this building be 100 million. That's the higher purchase price. Now, I want to buy that, this building on higher purchase. Assume now I pay a deposit of 80 million. I pay out of 100 million, I pay a deposit. I've said a deposit is the money that you pay first. I pay a deposit of 80 million. Now, after paying 80 million, my balance will only remain uh, 20 million. Assume now the balance, which is 20 million, I pay it within uh, 12 months, within 20 months, within 30 months, 30, 40 months. That is now what you call monthly installments. Assume now the balance is 20 million, and I, I agree with the owner of the building to pay for 20 months the balance. So how much money will I be paying every month? In short, what will be my monthly installment for that money? That means the balance you divide by 20. Then zero will cancel with zero. Then by two, one, by two, one. So my balance will be one million. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, one million. That means now for 20 months, every month I'll be paying only one million. That's a very good example of higher purchase. <laughs> the beauty will be mine only after 20 months. So assume that you die before you complete the, the final monthly installments. That's why I said this is not a good method. Yes, uh, higher purchase. Let me give a very good example. The market price of a sewing machine is 4,000. 585. 
Now we have the mark price of our sewing machine, 4,585 shillings. That's the mark price of our sewing machine. Now, Kifagio bought the sewing machine on our purchase. Kifagio bought the uh, sewing machine on our purchase. He paid a deposit of 1,460. Out of this, Kifagio has paid only a deposit of 1,460 shillings. Then, he's also paying eight monthly installments, every month, 400 shillings. He's also paying monthly installments, eight monthly installments, eight monthly installments, every month, 400 shillings. How much was the higher purchase price? Now, when you multiply 8 multiplied by 400, you get 3,200. This is the, that is the total money paid as monthly, in, monthly installments. That is the total money paid for monthly installments. So to get our purchase now, the, uh, you say the deposit added to total monthly installment. In our case here now, this is the monthly installment. You add the deposit, which is 1,460. You get now the higher purchase price. In our case here now, we have now 0, 6, 6, 4, 4,660. In our case now, you can see now the higher purchase price is higher than the match price. And by the way, when you pay cash, you pay less because you are given a discount on paying cash. Question A, how much was the higher purchase price? Now, case here now, our higher purchase price is 4,660. Question B, how much more did he, did, is the higher purchase price more than the marked price? In our case here now, how much more? The, when they ask you how much more, now you say the higher purchase price, which is 4,660, you take away 4,585. In our case here, we have balance of 5. 15 take away 8 is 7. Here is 5, take away 5 is 0. So in our case now here, the, uh, how much more is only 75 shillings? That's uh, much more you will pay on higher purchase more than the marked price. Another example, Mr. Kipara bought a radio on higher purchase terms. Mr. Kipara bought a radio on higher purchase terms. This is a radio which Mr. Kipara cannot afford cash. He's only paying on higher purchase terms. In fact, a simple radio, Mr. Kipara cannot pay cash. He's only buying on higher purchase terms. He paid a deposit of 420. I said deposit the money that you pay first. He paid a deposit of only, of only 420 shillings. Only 420 shillings. That's the deposit. Then we are, we are told that Mr. Kipara again paid 10 monthly installments every month, 150 shillings. He's paying now 10 monthly installment. Monthly means every month. Every month is only paying 480 shillings. Every month for 10 months. In our case here now, the total monthly installments is 480 multiplied by 10, which is equivalent to 4,800 shillings. This is the total monthly installment. How much was the higher purchase Price. In our case here now, the hour purchase price, I started by saying to get the hour purchase price, you say the deposit added to monthly installment. In our case here now, our deposit is 420 added, added now to total monthly installments. So in our case here, we have 4,800 added to deposit, which is 420. In our case here now, our higher purchase price for the same radio that Kipara paid in one of our shops here is 0, 0,225. 2, so the higher purchase price of the radio is 5,220 shillings. In fact, it's paying the radio after 10 months. <laughs> Again, now, 
that's how we get the higher purchase price. Higher purchase price. Question on the same question. How much more did he pay if the higher purchase price was 120% uh, of the marked price? The higher purchase price we are told was 120%. And they want to listen to this. Uh, and you understand the, this English that they are using in this question. The amount he paid was 120% uh, more than the marked price. So if he paid 5,220, that means this is, was 120%. So the question is this, what was the marked price? So if this was 120%, to get the marked price, you ask yourself, what about 100%? In our case here, we have 5,220. Multiplied by 100, then you divide by 120. In our case here now, 0 will cancel with the 0. Then by 2 years, it will be 6. By 2 years, it will be 2, 6, carry 1. Then again, by 2 years, it will be 3. By 2 years, it will be 50. In our case now here, we have uh, 261 divided by 3. By 3, 1. By 3, we'll go 8 times because of 24. There will be a reminder of 21. So by 3 is 1. By 3 here, we'll go 8 times because 8 times 3 is 24. Then 26, you take out 24, you remain with the 2. Then 1. 21 divided by 3 becomes 7. So in our case now here, our marked price is 87 multiplied by 50, which is now 0, 5, carry 3, which is equivalent to 43. So in our case now here, the marked price is 4,350. Now, uh, practically now, you can see now, the higher purchase was 5,220. The marked price was 4,350. You see now, the marked price is, is always higher than the marked price. If now the marked price was this, what do you think about the cash price? It, wa it was uh, less than 4,350. Uh, they can, the examiner can ask you the same question concerning the same question. Uh, how much more was the higher purchase price more than the marked price? Again, I want you also you to see the difference. The market price was 5,220. The, then the market price was, uh, uh, this is the higher purchase price. The market price was 4,350. So how much more? Now you subtract, you get a zero. 12 take away five is seven. 11 take away three, you get eight. So the balance now is 870 shillings, which is a lot of money, uh, a lot of money. That's why I say at the beginning that this is not a good method of, of uh, uh, buying for goods. In short, if you cannot afford cash, you better keep your money safe. Then you will be okay. Another good example was also tested last year, KCP 2019. Uh, uh, the depo a trender paid a deposit of 4000 when he was, buying, uh, he was buying an item. And then he paid 18 equal monthly installments of 1,200 each. So how much did he pay? This is a case that was tested last year on about higher purchase. This trader now, he decided to buy an item on higher purchase. He paid a deposit. Deposit is what you pay first. He paid a deposit of 4,000 uh, 4, shillings. This is deposit of 4,000 shillings. Thereafter, 18 equal monthly installments, every month 1,200. For 18 months, every month, every month is paying 1,200 shillings. So how much was the uh, higher purchase price? How much did he pay? Deposit plus total monthly installment. For 18 months, every month is paying this. That means now you multiply what is paying every month, multiply by the number of months. 18 multiplied by 12, you get 216. Understand that? 
18 multiplied by 12 is 216, then you add two zeros. So total monthly installments in our case here is 21,600. How much did he pay? They're asking higher purchase price. Now it's deposit added to total monthly installment. In our case here now, our deposit is 4,000 added now to the total monthly installments. So at the end of the day, he paid 0, 0, 6, 5, 2. He paid a total of 25,600 shillings. That is higher purchase. That is higher purchase. Uh, another example, the last one, this one was as in the year 2014, uh, Kerubo bought a TV on higher purchase terms. This now is a television. Kerubo could not afford to pay cash. He decided to pay uh, to buy the TV on higher purchase price. This was now on higher purchase price. That is Kerubo, the year 2014. He paid a deposit of 2,400. He paid a deposit, a deposit of 2,400. This is the last example. Please uh, listen carefully so that you may understand. Then, thereafter, he paid 15 equal monthly installments. Every month, 500. Thereafter, he paid 15 for 15 months. Every month, he paid 500 shillings for 15 months. That means now the TV will be for his only after 15 months. That's now you get the total monthly installments, which is now 500 multiplied by 15, which is the same as 7,500. This is the total monthly installments. Then you add the deposit, which is 2,400. So when you add the higher purchase plus total monthly instruments, you get the higher purchase price. In our case here now, we have now 0, 0, 0,099. In our case now here, the higher purchase price is 9,000, 9,900. Thank you very much. See you in the next lesson. Thank you.